friends, it's Kaylee Bird. Welcome back to my studio. You know I'm always thrilled to have you. Today we have got part three of the four part owning your Instagram for artists series. Um, we are going to be talking about getting featured today. I've got three very, I mean easy-ish ways. They're not gonna be that difficult. Nothing on Instagram is that difficult, you know what I mean? But three moderately simple ways uh, to get featured on Instagram. Uh, hopefully you saw my first two videos because those are definitely gonna play into this this one a little bit today and then these three will play into the big grand finale fourth video that I've actually been working on like all month it's a kind of a big deal so anyways make sure you pop that subscribe button so you don't miss a thing we all need to own our Instagrams with these crazy algorithms and our you know our engagement going down so much and everything I'm just just trying to help out my fellow artists so I love you guys so happy to have you pop that subscribe button and yeah stay tuned we got a lot to talk about today way in my opinion is the best most genuine like most effective most resonating with your audience way of getting featured however it is the most difficult and you will get lots of no's so take it with a grain of salt if this is going to be the toughest one and it's going to take you the most amount of effort but I think when it happens the payoff is the biggest okay so number one is collaborate with other brands or influencers to have your artwork featured and shared by them on their um, platforms and what this means is um, actually finding um, someone whose look is similar to yours their target audience is similar to yours maybe like what they're into like I know I referred to plants in the last one I'm gonna stick with that one you know if, if you do a lot of let's say watercolor you know orchid paintings or something and then you find someone who grows orchids and sells them to like you know flower collectors that kind of thing like you know if, if you can find somebody that's doing the same kind of subject and then reach out to them and say hey this is what I've got going on and I think that I could you know we could do something cool together like I could you know basically at this point you're kind of offering to make a piece of art for them because normally people that want to do a collaboration don't just want to like show something you already did six months ago. It would be like, hey, you know, hi, I paint orchids. I see that you like to like photograph and sell, you know, high end orchids. What if I did a painting of like one of your prize orchids, you know, and um, and then we, we like we maybe we told your followers about it as the process was happening. And then in the end, um, if you'll agree to like share it with people and share something about the process, then I will um, either like give you the actual painting or maybe give you a digital high resolution image that you can keep. Normally in my history, I found just giving them the actual piece is the best way to go. Um, that's why I said this is kind of the one that the most effort um, because you do actually have to make a piece of art and honestly, you might need to just give it away. Um, however, it can be really good because you know, the orchid collectors that are following this page normally might not really follow art pages. So now all these people that would not have found you otherwise, it doesn't matter that you're painting orchids all day, they're not looking for paintings at all. So now you have branched into this audience that they're not seeing a lot of orchid art and then all of a sudden you are this one orchid artist, you know what I mean? So all of a sudden you're gonna garner their attention and they're probably get some commissions and stuff like that or some purchases of your, of your previous art. So you're gonna break into this audience and it's gonna be very genuine because it's not just gonna be some random photo that or you know, photo of your art that was shared by the like, you know, orchid page guys. It's gonna be like, we did this together. Oh, I know my followers love this special kind of orchid, so together we're gonna create this piece of art. And the thing is that this is more of like a process, and normally it's more than just one post. Normally it's like a few posts. Oh my goodness, he can wait. Um you know what I mean? And so this is no, this. That's why this one is really effective because normally it's kind of like a building thing. And of course you're sharing all of this with your audience as well, you know, but it, it is a big job and you do wind up sometimes giving your art away for free. You have to gauge if that is worth it to you. This is kind of a step that usually only sort of beginner artists kind of. So it's been about two years since I've done any sort of collaboration like this, so I didn't feel like wading through all that Instagram, but I at least wanted to show you a couple blog posts 
from some collaborations. This one was a really great one. As you can see, she really wrote a lot. She wrote about how the portrait made her feel. She showed progress photos. This is a good blog post and I was really happy to work with uh, Mackie on this one. Here's another blog post that went wonderfully. She really put a lot of time and effort in this one. And if I remember correctly, I think she shared it with her newsletter subscribers as well. So not only did I get a great Instagram post, but I got this beautiful blog post, a newsletter. It was really a lot of exposure. Like I said, certain collaborations can really bring a lot of people towards your business. And the way that she made it so personal and wrote about how it affected her love as a mother, it was just a really effective collaboration. Conversely, this one was a little bit less than impressive. As you can see by the first line, it literally says, I want to start by apologizing to Kaylee for taking such a long time to write this blog post, which is kind of cringeworthy and pretty unprofessional to write that as the first line in your blog post. However, she did share a really nice photo on her Instagram, but I don't really remember it necessarily drumming up a lot of business. But that's okay. It's not up to the influencer. It's not their job and it's not their fault if it doesn't work out. You know, you win some and you lose some. And honestly, I am very grateful for every collaboration that I've done, you know, whether or not it was the most effective one or not. So I just wanted to add one more little thing about the collaboration. Make sure that um, whatever the agreement is, as far as like, I'm gonna make this piece of art for you if you did this for me, make sure that those both of those things are extremely clear from the get-go. Like make sure that they know you know exactly what the piece of art is going to like what the materials are what the size is going to be like if they're going to be able to keep it or not you know any of that kind of stuff and conversely you need to know exactly how they're going to share it. like are they going to share it in their story like how many posts sort of generally are they going to share it in their feed is it going to be a permanent photo in their feed are they going to share it on their newsletter are they going to share it in their blog on their website like all of these things i have definitely had some um problems with people that like I'm like oh you're gonna feature me and they're like great I'll do a blog post on you and I didn't realize that they meant I'm going to have a stack of 30 pictures and you're gonna be in that stack that people have to flip through not even like on the blog post but like they have to flip through and yeah and I did an entire portrait to be like in a stack of 30 photos it's like oh great or like someone said they're gonna share me on their Instagram great and what did they mean they gave me like one or two like not very well lit like not very good like shots on uh, their story real quick and nothing on their actual feed and i'm like good thing i spent hours and dollars making and sending you this portrait and you just had like two things on your story and nothing on your feed and uh honestly you guys twice i've had people say that they were going to do something and just flat out not do it so you got to take the good with the bad i've had a lot of people do what they were saying they were going to, but it has also happened where things were unclear, they didn't know what I wanted, or they just flat out wouldn't do it. So that's why I'm saying I've given you this one. It's kind of like the biggest one. It's definitely the biggest pain in the neck. It's definitely like, um, I don't know. I, I sound like I'm saying a lot of negatives, but when it goes well, it can be great for your business. Like you can get like multiple commissions or sales. Like it can really bump you up. You can get a lot of new followers. You can get like all of a sudden you can get like introduced to sometimes a pretty vast, you know, audience depending on how big this person or this brand is. So it's a good one, but it just takes a while. So the second way to get featured um, is pretty easy but it does cost money you know usually when things are pretty simple they do wind up costing money um, and that is to pay to play on an art share feature page and I have actually done this too I don't think there's anything wrong with it honestly like um, the number one thing is you want to make sure to do your research and you don't get ripped off because there are serious ripoff pages check out the last video I just made in this Instagram series because that is all about those uh, fake Instagram pages and I literally made that as a segue to this video so that I wouldn't have to go into it forever here, so check that out. But honestly, like, some of these pages that are legitimate and really do have, like, hundreds of thousands of followers and stuff, like, it took them years and a lot of effort and, you know, I mean, a lot of combing through Instagram. Like, it takes time to build up followings like this. As you know, as we are sitting here making a video about building up a following, you know that it takes a while to build up a following. So, 
paying to be featured on these pages is really not that crazy. I mean, it makes sense. And some of them are really great. Like, I don't do it very often, and actually I did a few because I'm filming this series right now, but it's probably been like a year or something since I've done you know, paid before, but usually it's somewhere between like six and twenty dollars. I have had people quote me like sixty dollars for a post and I'm like, thank you, goodbye. Like that's not worth it. But you know, depending on how big the page is and like um sometimes they'll have like, you know, a sister account and they'll show it on that too, you know what I mean, which is good. Um but yeah, for the most part, I think like maybe once or twice I got duped in the beginning, but for the most part, yeah, you do get legitimate people who are interested genuinely in your art coming to check out your page like it's just it's just how it happens so although it does cost some money like it really does help to show your artwork to a very wide large like group of people who already like artwork so I don't know I don't think it's that bad so just to show you my features real quick the ones that I recently did and between the two of them I got around six to seven thousand likes which is not bad um if you are curious how many followers i got from this venture make sure you tune into the next youtube instagram video now the third way to get featured is probably the most common way that i think people do and that is simply to use hashtags and to physically tag the photo um, for future pages. And now this, I don't know, I haven't really had a lot of luck with this. I used to tag a lot more of my photos, but now that I'm looking back, my images were probably not as clear as they are today. So maybe that's why like a few years ago when I used to do more of this, I didn't really find that to be effective. I think I maybe got featured like once or twice, but not by any of the big, huge ones, you know what I mean? So. I don't know. I know some people like tag the heck out of their photos and that can be good. Like the ones where you actually tag the photo, I always try to make sure that those pages actually want you to tag them in your photo because I think otherwise you'll just annoy them and they will like never ever feature you. And the hashtag thing, it's not a bad idea. I mean, you do get 30 hashtags. Maybe if you dedicated like four or five to some art share pages, you did that. But honestly, sometimes I see people and they just have like all art share tags and to me, it seems like a waste of hashtags because like, you know, hopefully you saw my first video about effective hashtagging, but you can really find a lot of people very effectively by niche hashtagging. And so to waste them on these art share feature pages that very likely are not gonna happen, like to me, it's not the most effective. So what I have done in the past, what I would say is to tag your photos themselves with pages that actually are open to that and then save your hashtags for doing effective hashtags. Oh my goodness, it is blowing, the wind is blowing, and actually it's really nice because it's been pretty hot around here, so I've got like everything open and I'm like, yes, wind tunnel me, wind tunnel me. <laughs> so here I'll just kind of go through with you on how I do a post. First, I will choose the images that I want to use and then I'll actually go into my notes and type up my caption. That way I can see it on the full screen and have everything nicely and neatly written instead of having to use this tiny little one inch that Instagram gives you. So you're seeing me copy and paste the caption I just wrote. I like to write a nice thoughtful caption, especially when sharing a completed work. And I make sure to add if I have prints or anything else available. I actually have mini prints of this one that I did a limited edition on. So if anybody's interested in a super affordable gallery quality G Clay mini print, check down below. Now there are two ways to tag an art sharing page in hopes of getting featured. One of them is to tag the physical photo itself with them and hopefully they will check them and look for them. I know some art share pages do not like to get photos like this, other ones do. You wanna make sure to do your research so you don't annoy anybody, but this is a way that you can hope to get featured. If you don't wanna to pay to play or if some of these pages don't actually let you pay, they only allow you to tag them. Hopefully you saw my video two videos ago from this Instagram series all about using hashtags effectively. If not, look down below because I will have a link. I like to have all of my hashtags saved in clusters and multiple notes 
on my phone and then I simply copy and paste and put along each photo. Now, I usually try to have like 20 or 25 hashtags saved and then I will kind of change them up or make them unique. You wanna make sure that you don't use the same hashtags all of the time. I will put a few things on such as oil painting and stuff that pertains to the medium. Then I'll also put on a few things such as plants life or I love plants that pertains to what I'm actually painting. And then I might put in a few of the actual art sharing pages that like you to use their hashtag instead of their tag. And remember, if you'd ever like some eyes on your own small art business, I am available for art mentoring via webcam. Check down below for links on finding out more information about that. Make sure you pop that subscribe button. I'll see you next time.